Despite its terrible track record, the bullet catch is such an exciting piece of entertainment that it goes on being performed today. Two modern magicians have devised their own version of the bullet catch that appears to double the risk. We're going to move a bullet from this side of the stage to that side of the stage and another bullet from that side of the stage to this side of the stage without crossing that line. So we do the bullet catch, the most dangerous trick that's ever been done in show business. People have died doing it. We do it better, and we're not going to get hurt. And what, what initials are you writing there? M-Y-L, which stands for? Mike Young Leal. Mike Young Leal. Leal? Yeah. And uh, what did you write there, Brett? B-A-S. Which stands for? Brett Aaron Simon. Brett Aaron Simon. I'm going to put this bullet on my hand here. I want to get a shot. You see your initials there? I want you to get a shot of Mike's bullet and a shot of Brett's bullet over there. Get those close-ups. Rotate it there a little bit. When Penn and Teller do it, I know the modus operandi, and I know these two guys very thoroughly. They're not in any danger whatsoever. But, boy, it's clever. And watch these bullets. We will not cross the line. We have, we have real guns on stage and real bullets, and real police officers have checked it out. And we weren't allowed to do it in England because no one could find anything fake we were doing. Uh, but there is nobody that's so ignorant as to think we're not doing a trick. It so it's the next round fired. You see that? Tell her we'll do the same. Brett, and I know that most of the magicians out there have no idea how it's done. And I'm not talking. When we do little jokes about stuff on our show being dangerous, it's always jokes. And the people who are selling real danger are people that I don't want as my friends. Sometimes, of course, they're giving us a great illusion which we can enjoy and partake in, but putting themselves in no danger. But sometimes magicians really do put themselves in danger. If one of us uh, even breaks an arm on stage, part of the beauty of our show collapses. I have a show called Extreme Magic and Deadly Escapes. And it's exactly that. It's both magic and deadly escapes. Now, the magic, it is what it is. It's illusion, it's sleight of hand, it's tricks, it's trap doors, hidden mirrors, all that kind of stuff. It's magic. But I draw the line when I do the deadly escapes. And for me, they are legitimately death-defying escape challenges. We're not doing that big swing and dick thing of, I don't know if I'm going to live or I'm not going to live. Uh, other people who did the bullet catch were doing that. That's your bullet? Yeah. Because if you're coming to our show because we might get hurt, fuck you. Go to NASCAR. Drop dead. We don't want you. You're a pig. In 1912, Houdini was tired of his milk can act being repeatedly copied, so he devised an even more spectacular and difficult water escape. This time, he upped the ante by being suspended upside down by his ankles, which were padlocked in place. There have been numerous magicians who have written articles about it, all describing it well, all telling how it's done, and nobody had it right. Ladies and gentlemen, in introducing the water torture cell, I am willing to profit the sum of one $1,000 to Why are you actually risking your life? And legitimately risking your life. Are you stupid? It's a calculated risk. It's not for everybody. Shouldn't be for everybody. Probably shouldn't be for me sometimes. But it is. And uh, until I hurt myself or it's no longer fun, that's the path I'm going. We did a run through. Took a little bit of a hit on the way down. Well, it's Friday the 13th. You kind of have to expect it. Hopefully it'll go a little better tonight. Robert Gallup has devised a brand new death-defying escape especially for this program. And after a final rehearsal, he'll perform it for the very first time. But this time, it's not Houdini who's his inspiration. 
Now I know what you're thinking. American magician in front of a glass box on the River Thames. <laughs> a loser. No, 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 I assure you. What I'm about to do won't take 44 days. It'll take just about four minutes. Now we're going to show you what's going to happen when that box actually reaches its apex, 30 meters above the ground. That rope will become taut, and then, of course, triggering that trap. Let's give it a go, Mark. Show us what happens. Here we go. Now, the crane is actually going to lift me almost 30 meters above the ground. When it reaches its apex, this trigger line will be pulled tight. At that point, if I'm not out and secured, I will fall when the trap door opens. All right, we're going to start with the Posey straight jacket. I'm going to be put into a straight jacket. Not one, but two straight jackets. Then I will be placed inside of this glass box, locked inside of this glass box. Guideline, stand by. On the bottom of the glass box, there's a hair trigger. A hair trigger tied to a rope, which will be anchored to an anchor block. Nice and straight. Looking good. Light torches! Light torches! Go me! Torches are lit! Alright, go fire! Go fire! Light the spikes! At least it's a little warmer up here. There's gonna be almost 100 flaming spikes directly beneath me. Remember, if I don't get out of both straight jackets in time and clip into safety, I will fall directly down onto these flaming spikes from 30 meters above. Standing by for standing by. On your cue, Robert. Three, two, one. Go, Skate, go. Raise the crane, go. Daddy, stay in the line. Stay on both sides, please. Come on. One minute! You need to hurry! All right, one more. Uh, one ten! You need to hurry, Robert. I can do this. One minute, 50 seconds! 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Three, two, one! Jesus! Oh, oh, God. God. Oh. Oh. David Blaine, eat my shorts! <laughs> I guess there's two ways to be a dangerous magician. Create the illusion that it is actually very dangerous or be one whacked out guy and just go for it. <laughs> Coming next here on BBC Two from the Grand Old Opry, the Country Music Awards. And over on BBC Three, those charming ladies, Emily and Florence, go to the ballet in Little Britain.